Hello and welcome to Bowtie Life. We are looking at the Blackberry Trellis right here, or I should say maybe the future Blackberry Trellis. Uh, it's been here for two years now. This past year, uh, we, we're having low production. I'm learning how to do blackberries here. Like we're learning how to do a lot of stuff. But uh, yeah, so we're in the uh, Bowtie Gardens and we're gonna look at the outer beds of the garden a tour here for july of 2023 and we've had some really warm weather uh past couple weeks today and yesterday we've had on the other hand a couple of tropical rainstorms and it's really humid right now but it's only in the low 80s right now it's uh, in the afternoon about five o'clock and the sun's kind of getting low over here we have a little bit of a hazy cover of clouds and uh, kind of unpredictable weather we have here in Destin, Florida. Uh, we are about seven blocks from the Choctahatchee Bay that way, which is a very large bay. And we're about seven blocks from the Gulf of Mexico that way. So we're kind of surrounded by two large bodies of water that keep our weather uh, in, in a very small range of temperatures and it really affects our our rainfall and everything too uh, we are considered subtropical here but uh, anyway uh, we're gonna take a look at the garden here here we go hi I'm Bowtie Dave <laughs> So as I already mentioned in the first part of this, uh, the getting out here in the garden for me is just a very energizing type thing. It's, it's a little bit exciting. I, I enjoy being out in the garden and uh, seeing the progress and seeing what's going on. Uh, it's just, I think, very invigorating. In fact, if I just turn the camera right here, you can see we have something odd hanging here. We have a tomato plant. And this tomato plant actually was sitting in a bed just over here, and I thought, there's a lot of green tomatoes, it needs to come out. I'm sorry, not over here, over there. Uh, it needs to come out, but I wonder if I can ripen any of the tomatoes. And you can see, there are ripe tomatoes on here. These things have been ripening up, and the birds haven't even gotten them all yet. So, a little bit of green on there, a little bit of hard spot there. Mmm. That's pretty tasty. There's something just very gratifying about eating some fruit that you've grown uh, in your own garden. It just, to me, it just makes a, a bright spot on the day. But uh, if you're just stumbling along finding our channel, um, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. And those of you who have already subscribed, thank you for coming back and uh, hope you stick through the whole video. We got a couple of things going on in the garden that I'm very happy about. Uh, looking forward to some, some production in a couple of areas, but uh, let's go ahead and rather than me rambling on about it, let's go ahead and take a look at it all. So here's a closer look at that tomato plant that I've hung up here. And uh, they say that you can hang it upside down with the roots intact and you can Go ahead and ripen some of your fruit and we have a number of tomatoes here i'm going to be harvesting some of these here as soon as we're done recording but uh, i don't know how much more i'm going to get it's kind of out here in the rough area so i didn't have a lot of hope for it if i could have hung it up if i had a place indoors that i could have hung, hung it it would have been good uh, we do have some great pomegranates big pomegranates now this is one of the trees i took out the uh suckers on the base and down here, you can see there's these little suckers coming out. And there were, there were about three or four dozen of those suckers last uh, spring or maybe over the winter that I took out. Um, and they say you do that and you have much bigger fruit. Well, all the fruit we've been getting is huge and I'm loving it. Uh, there hadn't been a lot of fruit, but all the fruit that we are getting has been so much bigger. So I'm feeling really good about that. We have four, four trees, one here, one there, one there, and then one over yonder that are all doing about the same. 
uh, better fruit and everything. Now we come over here to the uh, blackberry bush and you can see this uh, blackberry is getting everywhere. I need to, I just, I didn't realize this one was growing uh, awry, but I need to start training these things to get up into our blackberry arbor so that we can have better fruit next year. And uh, I'm working on, I've, I've, we've, I've done a lot of traveling this season and so we've kind of had a little bit of a interruption uh, for this year but we'll do better next year and it's okay because some of this stuff will work and some of it won't but the blackberries are we did get a few blackberries probably about half a gallon but we don't as you can see here i mean we don't really have a lot of vines growing we're we're developing the uh the orchard i guess is the not the orchard the arbor uh best we can so the black uh, blueberries, I'm sorry, the blueberry patch, of course, is, is spent for the season. And we won't be doing much with this this year except for keeping out the weeds. And that's a big enough job as it is. But uh, I have a challenge. Um, I have a grow bag here and a grow bag hidden back over there. And I think that is the grow bag that has the peppermint in it. And I know Gardener Scott just did a thing on peppermint jelly mm, I can already tell yes this is the peppermint the stems are green here oh that is so delicious you run your fingers through that and then smell your fingers it is so delicious but uh, there's a, even a Thai plant poking up back in there but uh, does that mean this is chocolate mint uh, I believe this is chocolate mint. I need to take care of both these bags. I've kind of neglected them a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where this came. Oh, no, this is going to be chocolate mint, I think. You ever have those times you forget what you put where? I'll have to dig around. Maybe there's a label under there. Maybe I'll get real lucky. Uh, <laughs> I seldom get lucky when it comes to that. The bee box over there is looking strong. I tell you what, these have been the most well-behaved bees since we separated them out into two hives. Uh, the other hive was taken away to another home and these bees have just become downright neighborly. I uh, haven't been stung, no one's been stung here in our property since uh, the, the beehive was split and uh, they have done their thing and they've done it well. And in fact, uh, Jeff, Chesser, my bee whisperer, um, has collected some honey in one on one of the videos. But uh, yeah, so the the cathedral up here, it's the cantaloupe cathedral. Uh, looks kind of like a the old European churches with the nave and the transept and everything. But uh, anyway, the cathedral up. It's called a cathedral up because we're growing cantaloupe on it, and. I've kind of been trying to keep these things in control as best I can, but look at these cantaloupe. They are just taking off. It's very exciting. We do have some ivy growing up in here. need to keep that in control. Uh, I need to get out here in the morning and do some major work out here. But like, look at this guy right here. This guy is trying to sneak away, isn't he? So we're gonna just kind of weave him up through the trellis and get him a new direction and that's basically what we need to do with these is keep their direction upwards because we want to have these cantaloupe growing up these uh this trellis so that it'll be off the ground and out of reach of pests uh we've already been through our kajari melons and uh i'm doing one more round of kajari melons and if they don't do good uh we're gonna just resort to cantaloupe but now I have one there I see growing. Uh, there's supposed to be a few growing across there, but with all the traveling I've had to do here recently, I have lost control and I may need to regain control here somehow. But the, uh, the zinnias, the zinnias are looking beautiful. They're keeping up. Uh, this thing right here is a zinnia growing right into the bee bath. And it just is, it either has bloomed or is blooming another round. Lots and lots of flowers for the bees to to climb, to climb all over and feed all over, which is very exciting. These are uh, 
a double bloom zinnia. And again, I like to take these, you get these heads like this. All you have to do is pick them, and there's a bunch of them over here, and just break them up and spread them out like that. And they will settle down into the dirt and grow new plants. In fact, is that new plants right there growing? It could be. That could be new zinnias. I have to let it grow a little more. Can't be sure until I see it grow some more. Always replanting zinnias and growing new ones. So the uh, fig trees, the backyard fig trees are growing strong. Uh, I did see a fig on this one before my last trip and that, oh yeah, here we go. There's something small growing there. That's new. Um, oh, no, it wasn't this tree, it was the other one. Let me see if I can get over here to the other tree uh, without disturbing the bees too much. We respect each other's space, or at least we try to. Well, I don't see a fig on here. It may have gotten eaten by a bird or whatnot, but these two are regular fig trees, not very big, not like the brown turkey fig. These grow a bit smaller. And uh, you can see here, there's a small fig. It's, it's not gonna survive, it's too late in the season. The elephant ears, elephant ears are just looking amazing. Enormous, enormous ears. Uh, we, try, we dug up one of these to see if there was a root, taro root that we could experiment with and see if it was edible. Uh, that did not happen because I think the plant was not big enough yet. So we're gonna let this thing grow another year, see if it'll grow a taro root that we can make poi with, though I have never in my life had poi, so that doesn't bode well, does it? All right, looking around here, we have our pile of grow bags underneath this tarp that's uh, processing for use, future use, because uh, under here, any weeds are getting killed out under the sun, and we'll have fresh grow bags to use when we're ready. And uh, kind of a storage area, but uh, the plants that we have over here, we have a, a possible lemon tree that may be recovering, which is kind of exciting. Uh, we'll have to see what, if we can get something out of that thing. Um, hmm, it's looking good. It has thorns. I think the lemon tree is supposed to have thorns. We have, we have a few zucchini plants here, and this is a little bit exciting. I look down here, and of course you can see that this is really getting chewed up uh, like it is destined to do. But if you look, here it is. I had to find it over here. Down in here, you can see there is a zucchini down there, uh, except it hadn't been pollinated. We'll see if that flower opens up. I have been keeping these sprayed with neem oil as best I can, but I don't know how well it's working. Uh, one of the things I did here, I was hoping that maybe putting it in the weed fabric would give it a chance to grow out better. The problem I've discovered, though, is that zucchini, of course, likes to reroot as it goes. Well, there's nowhere for it to reroot unless I cut my fabric again. And so I'm kind of, I kind of sunk myself with that thought, and it's not going to work very well. This one over here has another young one. Uh, see if I can find it real quick or if it's even still here. Um, oh yeah, there it is down there. Um, can you see that there? I don't know that it got pollinated. The, the bud has fallen off, but you can see the stem is all chewed up real good. Obviously I'm not sp either not spraying enough or I'm not spraying the right stuff. So this one is a little more promising. The stem is still getting chewed up, not nearly as bad. Look at that stem. It looks pretty good, but there is a zucchini down in there. And there's another one that looks even more promising down over here on the bottom. So we'll have to see if that actually takes. That's my, my only hope right now for having zucchini. Everybody keeps saying, oh, zucchini produces a lot. I haven't seen it yet. 
that's a little frustrating. When we have zucchini coming out our ears, I'll believe them, but I can't believe them yet. Uh, the watermelon here, now this was Millennial Gardener's idea about planting on the weed fabric. You plant in here and uh, it's growing out of a hole down in here somewhere, but it'll grow everywhere and the insects don't prefer to climb out everywhere and, and eat it up. So it's, it's growing good. It's looking really good. It's starting to get a couple of flowers. Um, give me just a second to find where I saw those flowers. Yeah, there's one right there. That's a male flower right there. Uh, see, see the stem? There's no fruit on the stem. That's a male flower. Down here. Oh, looky here. Here we have a female flower. So see how it has the fruit on it underneath the bud? That is a watermelon right there. And so I don't know if that's been uh, pollinated yet or not. Oh, I see another one down there at the bottom. There's another uh, female flower. It has a fruit underneath the bud. So there's a few male flowers. I see some more male flowers over on the far end over there. Uh, I'll have to see what we can get out of this. I have better hope for this than I do for my zucchini at the moment. <laughs> we'll have to see what happens. Uh, this is a pomegranate tree that I've ended up cutting out uh, because it was dead, 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 dead as a doornail. And then we come around here and we have our first in-ground brown turkey fig. So we're going to be training this to grow up and I wanna do leaders, four directional leaders somewhere here with a vertical leader and get something more going on this thing. Uh, the Ligustrum, it's the first time I've looked at the Ligustrum since coming back on my last trip. Um, there was a lot of green stuff on here and it looks like all the green stuff that was here has died. It's gone. I mean, oh no, this isn't green stuff. Oh, you know what, that wasn't green. That's green, but it looks like it's suffering. This is actually coming out. It's a ligustrum. It is not much use. Now I say it's a ligustrum. This is not the ligustrum. This is something else that's a nuisance. And we are taking everything out. I don't want anything. The a ligustrum is just purely decorative and doesn't really offer a lot to my garden for what I need. So I had to make a decision. It took me a year and a half to make that decision on this particular plant, but we did it. So there's a chocolate mint down there. Um, you can tell by the dark stems inside the arch trellis that is not being used right now. We're gonna come around here and uh, now in this little thicket of grass right here, we've been having my largest little black snake uh, living. And I've been resisting pulling this uh, grass out. There is a uh, jasmine plant under here. In fact, you can see the jasmine growing up uh, the tree right here. Well, this isn't jasmine. This is the water oak trying to re-sprout. But um, I've been resisting coming in here and taking out the grass because of the snake, just because he's a good snake to have around. We've had rodent issues like rats, and he was big enough to be taking care of something, I think. So I'm not hearing anything. So I'm feeling okay about pulling some of this stuff out. Uh, these little stems, you can see they just pop right off. Now that's the jasmine right there. Uh, but these stems, they just pop right off. This tree we had removed in January and uh, it was a massive tree that created an, an eclipse on our garden and it needed to go. We lived with it for a year, over a year, and uh, we are using it for a jasmine pole now. We will see how long it lasts, but I do expect it to live a few years. Um, our wood pile with lizards on it. Now there's another snake, I believe, living in here. Time for your close up, Mr. DeVille. <laughs> there he goes. Some of these are really beautiful lizards. Uh, and we've got weeds growing up here. I've got to get some of this firewood processed, obviously. Um, this Satsuma orange tree, I believe, has finally given up the ghost. 
Uh, I'm very sad about that. Uh, I tried to trim back a lot of dead stuff, but it was from the Christmas freeze of last year. Sad stuff. Another chocolate mint down here. We're working on keeping those. The mint helps to keep uh, rodents, squirrels and stuff a bit in control. It doesn't eliminate them. Nothing in nature is perfect like that. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be in control. So underneath here, <laughs> this thing has gotten out of hand fast. Now this, there's an onion patch under here and the onions are getting drowned. And it's getting drowned by this stuff here, which I forget what it is, but it's not what I'm intending to grow here. But it needs to come out because I have onions growing under here and they're growing strong where they're growing still. There's several over here. But I'm gonna lose this onion patch if I don't get in here and get this in control. It's kind of disappointing. So another pomegranate tree. It's actually dying. There's one branch here that's living in here. Um, a lot of this other stuff needs to get pulled out. Uh, we're losing pomegranates left and right now this year, uh, this over the past year. Part of it was the Christmas freeze. Part of it was I just don't know quite how to take care of pomegranates. Uh, I do think it's interesting that the uh, pomegranate that's thriving are the ones that I trimmed all the suckers off of. So I do need to get on that. You can see over here, this, there's a pomegranate there. All the suckers down there, Those that's actually kind of bad for the future health of that uh, tree. There's a bunch of suckers on that one over by the compost bin as well. A lot of extra elephant ears growing everywhere. Not sure quite how that happened, but it did. Used to be a lemon tree back behind there. Now, um, there is something interesting growing right here. This is actually a lemon tree coming back outside of the pot and it's actually growing in the ground down there and I'm I guess I'm kind of thankful that this pomegranate is dying because if I clear all this out I hope I can get that lemon tree to live that would be that would be a coup for my garden uh, the calendula um, the comfrey needs to be uh, harvested something fierce this is my original rosemary plant if you saw in Part one of the video tour, you saw me talking about my rosemary plants that came from cuttings, came from this huge plant. It's enormous. It's about four or five feet across. It's enormous. But really good for cuttings. I really need to get in there and trim up some of that dead stuff under there to see if we can get that thing to thrive another year or two. But uh, anyway, so loquats. We're down here to the loquat grove. We're eventually gonna have a loquat grove over in the far corner of the backyard. And this, the six trees that you're gonna see across here are the trees that are designated for that purpose. We have one here, one here. We have leaf flower growing up in this one and, and this one. These don't need to be here. There's also two more up there and two more in the end we'll look at in just a minute. Well, we can go ahead and look at them. They're actually looking very strong. They're, the growth is strong. Uh, they just, they're just looking really good. This one's got a lot of spearmint growing up in the middle of it. We need to trim this back, obviously. Spearmint, all kinds of mint are just grow prolifically. You can trim them back as harshly as you want to, literally anytime you want to, and they will come back. So here's the other loquats. Uh, this one's got a little biting. I'm not sure what that is. I haven't seen any evidence of insects. Um, I check every once in a while, but it might be birds. Uh, I don't know what it is. But six loquat trees designated for that arbor, and, or for that uh, hedge. And I even have several in reserve over here. So I like having things in reserve whenever I can get them. Uh, aloe. We got uh, two pots with aloe. We have this one here. This one actually blooms beautifully. I can't remember if it's the... I think this is the red blooms. Uh, and so I'm trying to maintain that and then this over here is another pot with aloe in it which is overgrown since my last trip good grief this thing is really 
taken off, but this one I believe blooms red. And if you look at the uh, raised garden bed tour, uh, which is part three of my monthly garden tours, uh, you will see we have another patch of uh, these aloe, big aloe like that. So we're not in any loss, but uh, yeah, and there's another one right there. Uh, another aloe I'm trying to keep alive. I do like the aloe. I like the idea of aloe. So speaking of uh, surviving lemon trees, I want to show you this thing right here. And, and this is the story. This is the big story. Um, let me reach over here and get some props here because that lemon tree, and I'm gonna grab another piece here. Ah. So that lemon tree was sitting inside this pot right here. And in fact, here's the bottoms of that pot. I had to cut it all up to get it out. I mean, I had to shred the thing to get it all out. And all that was sitting on this really, really heavy, heavy weed fabric. Not only that, grass had completely covered this thing. And I did not know there was a living lemon tree in there. I thought all my lemon trees were dead. And uh, there's a video I did cleaning out the yard. Uh, it's been a few weeks ago now. And I pulled the grass. The St. Augustine grass had literally grown over this whole area right here. I pulled it all off and out pops this growing lemon tree. And I... I'll admit, I squealed like a little girl. I was so excited that this lemon tree has survived. And so it was in this pot and on, sitting on top of this very heavy grow fabric. And so what I did is I cut the pot, I cut the bottom out, I slid the bottom out. Now, the roots had actually gone through some of the holes and found their way into the earth. And so, so that uh, it was getting good nutrients somewhere from underneath. I couldn't lift the pot. It was, I mean, the, the root was like that big. The root was, um, do you see how big that hole is in the middle there? Well, in fact, one of the roots was right there in that hole. They were that big, but the, the, the root was literally as big as these holes, except they were getting choked by the plastic. And so I cut, I extracted the, the pot off the plastic. I left it there. And then I took another larger pot which is which you can see how big the larger pot is i cut the bottom out and i made a sleeve just to hold the dirt because you don't want to just expose all the roots that are you know eight ten inches off the ground but i do want to allow that thing to start growing down into the ground and start growing good strong roots and this thing i'm so excited i believe it's going to survive and i am beyond words thrilled about this lemon tree right here this is truly the most exciting thing for me right now in my outer beds uh, the zucchini is great if it happens great this right here i thought we had lost our whole orchard the reason why our you know all our lemon trees we lost half a dozen lemon trees the reason why this is so great is because as this thing grows i can take cuttings from this and i can create other lemon trees and we can eventually have all our lemon trees back and so we're going to do more experiments with that that i've been studying on but we have a lemon tree, a, a healthy lemon tree growing back on big. In fact, let me show you this, the stump down here that it's growing from. It's a big stump. You can see here, look how big this trunk is. This is a significantly uh, healthy lemon tree down here. So yeah, very exciting. That's the most exciting thing for me in the garden right now, in the outer beds right now. So. I was mourning the loss of our lemon trees and I'm mourning the loss of our satsuma orange trees. We'll deal with that later. Final thing back here is the compost. And I gotta say on the compost here, uh, this middle bin, before I left, it's been a week and a half ago now. No, two weeks ago now. This middle bin was actually stacked up to the, where that bucket is. It was stacked that high piled and it's all broke, beginning to break down. I got to cut grass again, so uh, it's going to get piled up again. But there's a lot of good, healthy material in here. I put leaves in here. I could put garden cuttings. I put kitchen scraps. I put grass cuttings. And this middle bin here is just 
really healthy. In fact, I really want to flip it, but I have nowhere to flip it at the moment. I'm, I'm going to have to empty this right bin over here and try to get it to uh, um, get a place where I can empty this bin so I can flip it over and, and I want to see what's down in it, but it's good to get oxygen down in there too as well for the for the processing of the compost. The left bin over here is from another source. I'm letting it sit for at least a year before I use it. So it might be the beginning of 2025's compost bin. Uh, you can see on top there, that is the old Brussels sprout uh, plants. That's what those big things are. Probably should chop those up. Uh, you can see the compost that was built last year. Uh, there's not much of it left. In fact, um, if you go look back at that uh, video on uh, how to protect seedlings in the garden, and you can see where my grandson helped dig up, my five-year-old grandson helped dig out some of this compost and put it over in the raised bed. Uh, this is what he helped dig up. This was good stuff, and I'm very excited that I had a massive pile of it and almost done with it. So I got some other sand here and some other soil back over there that uh, on the other side of the wheelbarrow that is good. That's good soil over there I can use. But uh, the sand, of course, we want to mix in with our beds more to try to get more structure. So there you have it, the outer beds. The exciting things, the cantaloupe are starting to grow, the cucumbers, um, the uh, blackberries are growing vines. They won't be producing until next year, so but we can start training the new vines to grow up so they're ready to produce next year. And of course, my lemon tree just right here. I am just over the moon about getting lemon trees back. Um, we, we used all the lemons last year. Uh, I don't think I gave away but maybe four or five lemons and we probably had over a hundred lemons. Uh, off of a tree that we lost that was closer here that was completely lost. Uh, it rotted out. In fact, the trunk is, I think the trunk may still be there. I can't remember, but uh, it was right down in here somewhere. But anyway, unimportant. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that's, that's the progress in the garden. I hope maybe it uh, kind of gives you an idea of things, how they grow. You know, you can watch month to month and see what grows and see what's happening in the garden and uh, you can see how fast stuff goes. Uh, we're getting into the raised garden beds next, and uh, there's stuff growing there. There's things have been changing there as well. So um, if you've watched any of our other videos, of course, we, we try to release a video almost every day. Uh, if you watch any of our other, other videos, you'll see there's things happening in the raised beds too. Uh, stuff growing, stuff getting replanted, stuff getting ripped out because it's old and tired, and uh, I got a failing experiment. Uh, I did an experiment and it's failing. And, and, and in fact, it's, it's not only failing, it's failing miserably. So you kind of have to tune in to the next part of this video series of this month's uh, three-part garden tours to see what my failure was. But uh, anyway, if you've just stumbled along finding our channel, uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Don't want to miss any of the parts of the garden tours each month. Uh, the um, If you've already subscribed, thank you for watching as well. Uh, everybody, Every watch of our videos helps grow the community. And uh, if you think this video was uh, informational, educational, uh, inspirational, or maybe just entertaining, uh, please click the thumbs up on this video. Share with your friends on your social media pages. It's hard to describe how much that helps grow the community. Uh, every time someone shares it with their friends, uh, it gives a little more exposure to the channel that we're trying to grow in the community. And, and we're just a small part of the overall community. There are so many great YouTubers out there that are doing quality gardening videos and, and homesteading videos that uh, it's really worth investing our efforts into uh, to, to help grow because this is this this is the future. Uh, it's one of the little tiny ingredients that's that makes up our future. Uh, you know, we we've many of us have seen food shortages. 
uh, certainly in the past three years, but some of us have seen some food shortages before that even. And so uh, I very strongly believe that one of the solutions to a food shortage is the home gardener. And I know that because this country has done it on more than one occasion. One of the biggest times was the Victory Gardens back in the World War II era when over a billion servings of food was created out of gardens and it practically eliminated any food shortage that came out of that time. It was amazing. People couldn't believe it. And so ever since then, people have been gardening. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a very important thing to have that skill, and, and I think it's important that we all keep those skills in our minds, uh, even if you're just growing a single tomato plant. And, and um, I'll take a moment to, to uh, promote another series that we're starting. It's actually several series, and we're doing a, a several series of videos that are uh, targeted towards someone who has a small space, a literal small space. And we are going one plant at a time in various places. And because, you know, back when I started, I had one tomato plant. And that one lonely tomato plant given to me by Kip, thank you Kip, uh, a number of years ago, uh, just brought a spark of life in me that I didn't realize was there. And it's, it's landed this whole garden, everything you see here, started with one tomato plant from a friend. And now, uh, when I grow seedlings, when I grow plants, if someone wants a plant, I'm growing extra. Uh, not only for myself in case something dies, but I'm growing extra uh, to give to someone. I have some people that I regularly give Thai hot peppers to. Uh, I have a number of people that like to have jalapenos. I didn't give them a jalapeno. No, I think I did give them a jalapeno this year. I need to grow more jalapenos next year uh, and have more seedlings. We were rebuilding our whole pepper uh, bed this year, so I didn't have a whole lot to spare in that area. But next year, ooh, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of seedlings to give away. Um, but every time you, you, you plant seedlings and you grow seedlings, you give them away to friends, neighbors, family, uh, you're, you're creating a spark of life in that person. And even if it's not something that you see happen right now, this year, you've created a spark of life in someone and, and down the road, they're going to want to grow their own seeds maybe. Or maybe they just want to cultivate the ones they get from you and they're happy doing that. And, and that's just creating a little joy in their life and a little bit more food security for other people. And I think that's just so very important. So anyway, I've rambled on long enough and... <laughs> Uh, I need to end this uh, outer garden bed tour, so uh, I hope that you found it encouraging. Again, click the thumbs up, please subscribe, and grow something. Have a blessed day.